In this episode of Star Hopping, we'll look at the Camelopardalus region and show you how to find these beautiful deep sky objects. IC-342, the Bubble Nebula, and the Gamma Cassiopeia Nebula, IC-59 and IC-63. All right, let's go star hopping. Hey, hello, hi, and welcome to episode 62 of Star Hopping. I'm Dave Hearn, and I'm very pleased to be your host. In this series of programs, we'll show you the most beautiful sights in the night sky and explain exactly how to find them with your binoculars or your telescope. So we've had a bit of a break in the series. There's been a fairly large change in our YouTube environment that definitely affects our future. I'll speak more about this at the end of the episode tonight. So let's get on with three new deep sky objects for you. In this episode of Star Hopping, we'll be looking into the north and northeastern parts of the night sky, in and around the dim constellations of Camelopardalus the Camel, Cepheus the King, and Cassiopeia the Queen. All these objects are generally somewhat difficult, so in order to see them, you'll need a fairly large scope, say a 10 inch, and a reasonably dark sky. All three of the targets are very photogenic astrophoto subjects. Our first target of the evening is a huge face-on spiral galaxy, and we'll find it right after this break. Star Hopping would like to thank our wonderful supporters on Patreon. Your contributions will allow us to create and provide more quality astronomy content. We appreciate your generosity and support. Star Hopping target number one. Found only 20 degrees east of due north in the dim constellation of Camelopardalus is one of the largest face-on spiral galaxies in the sky. IC342 has a whopping 22 arc minutes across, nearly the size of the full moon. Lying only 10 degrees above the plane of the Milky Way galaxy, it sits in a very dense star field, making it a spectacular astrophoto target. Add to all this its brightness, glowing at magnitude 9.1, and we have a showpiece galaxy that is easily seen in medium-sized telescopes, and in larger telescopes, its beautiful spiral structure is revealed. If this galaxy were positioned a little farther above the plane of the Milky Way, it would be possibly two and a half magnitudes brighter, making it one of the brightest galaxies in the whole sky. To find IC342, we'll be starting from the bright yellow beacon Capella, easily found about 40 degrees up in the northeastern sky around 11 p.m. in January and February. This hop is pretty easy because all of our guidepost stars are about fourth magnitude or brighter. So let's start out by moving about seven degrees to the upper left to fourth magnitude seven Camelopardalus. Next, move about six degrees to the left and slightly downward to fourth magnitude beta Camelopardalus. Next, move about six degrees to the left to fourth magnitude alpha Camelopardalus. Now move about seven degrees to the upper left to fourth magnitude gamma Camelopardalus. Now about five degrees to the upper right lies fourth magnitude BE Camelopardalus. Start moving toward it, and about halfway there, you'll see the faint glow of IC342 coming into your wide field eyepiece. IC342 is only seven million light years distant, actually very close, and it's been suggested that it's one of the best examples of a nearby spiral galaxy that closely resembles our own Milky Way. After this break, we'll move on to one of the easiest star hops I've ever done with zero moves. We'll check it out right after this message. Would you like to see the scripts, images, and star charts that I present in each episode of Star Hopping in written form? Well, you can. They're available in our Field Notes digital guides that we produce for each and every episode of Star Hopping. Field Notes guides are available right back to episode one of Star Hopping and you can put them on your phone or tablet to take with you out to your favorite observing site. Our field notes are available in our digital store individually in seasonal bundles or by subscription 
where you can receive these useful digital guides in your inbox, sent to you the same day as when we publish each new episode of Star Hopping. Check out our selection of field notes in our digital bookstore by visiting starhopping.org forward slash digital store. Hopping target number two. Gamma Cassiopeia, also known as the bright second magnitude star Navi, has a very interesting nebula around it, surprisingly known as the Gamma Cassiopeia Nebula, with its components IC59 lying slightly to the east, downward in its current position, and IC63 found a little to the lower left. Navi is the central star of the W of Cassiopeia, so it's easily found with finder scope or binoculars. If you have a large scope, 10 inches or above, you should be able to spy the two faint nebula, particularly if you're using a nebula filter such as an oxygen 3 filter. IC59 is centered just 20 minutes of arc north of Gamma Cass, and it's very faint, diffuse, and it's positioned north and south. It's primarily a reflection nebula appearing blue in photographs because it scatters starlight. It's a bit larger but fainter than IC63. So a camera with a fairly long telephoto lens, say 500 millimeters or so, piggybacked on a telescope or tracking platform would be perfect to capture the bright star and its two faint neighbors in a single frame. This image from KPO shows the massive star with the nebula to the right. Our next target is another faint but gorgeous nebula found in the outer areas in Cepheus the King. We'll check it out right after this break. Star hopping target number three. The Bubble Nebula, cataloged as NGC 7635, is a faint and peculiar planetary nebula situated not far from the reasonably bright open cluster M52. With an 8-inch scope, the nebula is visible as an extremely faint and large shell around an 8th magnitude star. The nebula itself softly glows at 12th magnitude, so you'll need a large scope to see this one, probably a 10-inch to a 12-inch. To find the Bubble Nebula, we'll be starting on the bright second magnitude star, CAF, also known as Beta Cassiopeia. Start out by moving about 7 degrees to the lower left to 5th magnitude, 6 Cassiopeia. Next move about 2.5 degrees to the lower left to 5th magnitude, 4 Cassiopeia. Now move about 3 quarters of a degree to the upper left and you'll find the bright open cluster M52. Now move about a half degree to the left and you'll spy the faint bubble nebula coming into your eyepiece. There's a seventh magnitude star directly to the left of the bubble nebula that you may have to place out of the field of view. Try using averted vision to see if you can visually locate the faint 12th magnitude planetary nebula. So we found three challenging objects this month for the big guns. We started off with a faint but very large face on spiral IC342 and Camelopardalis. Then we moved into Cassiopeia to locate the faint nebulae IC59 and IC63 nearby the bright star Gamma Cassiopeia. Lastly, we moved barely across the border into Cepheus to track down the elusive bubble nebula, also known as NGC 7635. We also caught a bonus object in the open cluster M52 on our way to finding the bubble nebula. So I wanted to share with you some of the changes that we've been experiencing with YouTube. In the last month or so, YouTube has demonetized a very large number of newer YouTube creators, including us. Which means our videos will no longer be able to take advantage of the revenue we've been receiving for the advertisements that appear. It hasn't been a huge amount, but it has been paying for a bit of my hosting bills. So in order to now be eligible for this revenue stream on YouTube, a creator's channel needs to have 4,000 hours of watch time within the past 12 months and 1,000 subscribers. In the last 365 days, our channel has had 1,639 hours of watch time. And to date, we have 828 subscribers. So that didn't make the cutoff on either measurement. 
Additionally, YouTube is revoking the ability for us to actively link to external websites within the videos. This change is particularly challenging because I do link to my field notes and my newsletter from the cards in the episode trailer each week. It's been a significant source of traffic for the star hopping website. So this is a pretty good setback for the up and coming YouTuber. For you, it means you'll no longer see ads on my videos, which may be a good thing. But for me, it means some changes. It means I'll be shopping for a new video platform, as now YouTube really has no advantage for me over the competitor platforms. I understand that Amazon is coming out with a new video sharing platform, which I will definitely take seriously. If that pans out, I will definitely let you know. I already have a presence on Vimeo, uh, but the revenue opportunities there really are not so great. They're kind of limited. So until I find a better opportunity to make star hopping pay for itself, I'm going to have to suspend the production of the show for now. I do really appreciate all the support I've been receiving from you over the last two years, and I hope you continue to watch and find the material useful for many years to come. I also hope that the shows themselves, the field notes, and my book, A Year of Star Hopping, have nurtured and increased your interest and love of observational astronomy. Share this interest with your kids and your friends. It's how we make our ripple in the universe. So that does it for this Star Hopping episode. You can find the show notes on our website at starhopping.org forward slash sh062, where you can comment and leave any questions that you may have. You can also contact me personally on Twitter, at StarHoppingMan, where I'd love to help you with any astronomy or observing questions. So feel free to reach out with your questions at any time. I'm here to help. Well, thank you very much for joining me here, and I hope to see you again sometime in the future with more star hopping tips and tricks. Take care. Oh.